We are approaching monsoons, a season we all are looking forward to to relieve us from the harsh heat. A change in weather brings viral infections, diseases spread to water contamination and mosquito bites. Though we know all about it, today we have with us Dr. Yogesh Shetye to discuss, learn and understand more about these infections and diseases. Before we head straight into the episode, once again a request. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel. Leave us your comments in the comment box to help us get better and grow. This is an episode with Dr. Yogesh Shetty to learn about the diseases during monsoon. How do we cope up with it on the People Tree Show? See you on the other side. Dr. Shetty, a very warm welcome to the People Tree Show. How are you doing today? I'm good, Stacey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now that we are approaching uh, monsoons, uh, what are the infections that uh, we encounter during the season? Monsoons, usually we are having, um, because of uh, high humidity and everything, mm -hmm. we are having usually viral fever cases are seen very common. We are having influenza and all flu cases. Okay. Then we are having uh, some viral diarrhea are usually seen. Okay, so that's the stomach infection. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what are the uh, common symptoms? Okay, viral usually present sometimes with fever. It can present with sore throat, okay. running nose, cold, dry cough, body ache, and all. There are usually symptoms of a sudden onset of a high fever and in your family more than one or two members can also get infected because viral is just suddenly transmitted. Okay, and uh, when it comes to diarrhea? Diarrhea usually you get symptoms, you want me to elaborate on some symptoms. Yes. It's like you get stomach pain, abdominal discomfort, you may have nausea, vomiting, mm -hmm. there could be loose motions, watery stools. Weakness, uh, fatigue. Okay, so uh, like uh, when we are, when we have these symptoms, it's uh, how soon should we see the doctor? Because we normally have this habit of waiting for a few days. See, normally, and, yeah, normally yeah. it depends. Like initially, you can even try a home remedy. It depends on the intensity. Like if you're comfortable, initially a bit of home remedies, like for diarrhea, you can have some electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Uh, fluid replacement, having some light diet, keeping your stomach a bit uh, light in the sense no forcefully eating and all, but mm -hmm. hydration maintenance is very important. Okay, like a bit of rest hydration and all. is electrolytes. Electrolytes and even normal water and electrolytes, some okay. ORS sort of. Okay, and uh, light foods, so if you could specify the light foods, so it's more on a veg diet? A veg diet is more preferable in our tropical climate. Mm -hmm. It should be well cooked food. It's like that moong dal, kichdi, and all, or that pears, what we call, or that kanji, kanji sort of. Yes. So they are very easily digestible. But you have to maintain a good intake also a bit, mm -hmm. because you should not. We cannot afford a weakness. Right. That can be tried initially, but if the diarrhea, like a in sense, you come to know the intensity. If there is too much discomfort, mm -hmm. stomach pain, fever and all, it's mm -hmm. better to consult. consult. Nowadays, people do consult because people don't want to lose their working days. Yes, 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 very true. Uh, so, um, even um, like, uh, if I just like want to understand, like the similar diet should also be followed uh, when we are going through viral, viral infections, right? So it's normally... Uh, so it depends, like if there is a loss of appetite and all, mm -hmm. naturally you don't feel like, but a bit of proteins, a good uh, nutrition pro intake also is important. So along with electrolytes, even if you can consume some, even egg whites if it's possible, mm -hmm. some boiled egg whites if people want to, you can, because proteins are very essential also. Yeah, or that moong dal kichadi is what I usually prefer. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about the like a chicken soup or something like that? That's during viral infections, not uh, yeah during cold. If it's uh, in cold and all, you can even chicken soup is a good thing. Okay. You can have a chicken soup if it's uh, during viral cold and everything. You can. Okay, and uh, like when it comes to viral infections, doctor, like especially when it comes to throat infection, 
I remember once you had advised me not to, you know, take uh, the uh, drink very hot water. Yeah. Yeah. So like. Uh, See, normally, grant my advice are that people feel that it should be very hot water. Mm. Your throat should get burned, which I'm totally agree. It should always be lukewarm water. Mm. Lukewarm, just for the soothing feeling. Mm. And uh, not at all too hot where you burn your throat during COVID. We saw many cases of like that because people were drinking too hot, hot that Kasai, lots yes. of advertisements were there. Yeah. So COVID virus get burned. I think COVID doesn't get burned, your throat yes. gets burned. Uh, yes. So um, basically, once you have like for a better understanding, if it's uh, if the water is really too hot, if you have a sore throat, it will worsen the condition and it will not. Uh, it will recover. worsen. It will burn your mucosa in long. Uh, people have a habit of drinking too hot of a water, which mm -hmm. is not good in long terms. Also, because okay. your body, everything is made to some temperature. Right. A lukewarm water is okay, or even a plain water is okay. Right. Okay. In fact, if the throat pain is too much, you can even take some analgesic like paracetamol, over-counter medications are there, some anti-cold tablets for one or two days and see in case of some viral symptoms. One or two days paracetamol, we will advise and in one or two days, you are not feeling relief, mm -hmm. you can consult a doctor or your symptoms are too harsh where you are totally uncomfortable, you can consult. We are uh, going through summers, you know, so what actually happens to the body when we are, there's a shift in the weather, we are going from a hot climate to a uh, to monsoon, so what really happens to the body, how does the body deal with it? Yeah, see then during monsoons, what happens, a sudden change of climate and all occurs mm -hmm. and usually in monsoon our body digestive systems and intestinal systems becomes a bit weak. Okay. So usually more susceptible to infections and are common water gets choked water gets a bit contaminated vegetables get contaminated sometimes sewage and pro improper sanitizations are there so sometimes the sewage water seeps into your this thing so uh, we usually get some common symptoms like diarrhea stomach infections are common okay so uh, which other uh, like diarrhea and stomach infection, like which other uh, diseases are uh, prone due to water contamination during monsoon? We are having waterborne diseases, most common is typhoid. Mm -hmm. We see cases of jaundice, hepatitis. Oh. Even uh, sometimes there is cases of leptospirosis. I think Goa also saw one sport, I think nowadays is common. Okay, so if you could elaborate, what is uh, lactospirosis? Yeah, leptospirosis, what happens is normally from animal to human. Okay. So, what happens like, usually we, when I was practicing in Mumbai, we had seen a lot of one big bout of leptospirosis in around 2005 or 2003 or 4 that time. Mm -hmm. Cat urine gets contaminated with the water and infected with leptospira uh, bacteria. Mm -hmm. And if through cuts and bruises from the skin, it can enter your body. Okay. And you can have a very bad high fever, joint pain, swollen eyes, okay. red eyes and all. And it's a life threatening also. Ooh. You can have go into organ failures like liver failures and all. So okay. that's the reason always to wear a full clothes, uh, if your wounds are open, it should be covered and all is common. Even diabetic patients should take care uh, during monsoons Clinic because, course. yeah, because uh, again, the soil is a bit contaminated and wet, so you should not walk barefoot, you should okay. cover your footwear, you should wear a proper footwear, it's very important. So, if you could elaborate, uh, what are the symptoms of uh, typhoid and what should uh, a patient do. Okay, now typhoid being a water disease, usually what happens, it's uh, more of sanitation to be done. It happens because of if you drink contaminated water or uh, uh, contaminated food, mm -hmm. more chances of typhoid. So usually it's a sanitation, it's mostly transmitted to fecal oral route we call. What's so fecal oral route means from the feces. From the human feces. So, if okay. people uh, take, for example, those working in some restaurants or roadside vendors and all, if their hands are not clean and with the same, all the infection gets settled in their typhoid, typhoid, the salmonella, the bacteria of the typhoid is in your nails. Okay. So, from that, it gets transmitted to you. Okay. So, so well, it's not safe uh, to even have like the street food. 
during monsoon street food it should be proper well uh, hygiene should be maintained by yeah, any vendors gloves. yeah gloves it should be uh, very less common but you are all now if you see your coriander your tomato all uncooked foods should be avoided or the person who is using should cook wash well okay it's very important so i would avoid uh, people i would um, like to let people know to avoid eating road side uncooked food like chutneys salads and all yeah during monsoon is totally no okay and uh, what are the symptoms of uh, typhoid doctor typhoid usually starts with high fevers there are fever bouts mm-hmm. you may have nausea vomiting also can be a symptoms you may have a bit of stomach discomfort mm-hmm. but mostly it starts with high temperatures okay. sudden rise of temperature long standing prolonged fever okay so fever not going more than 5 6 days fever with headaches mm mm-hmm. it's a common symptoms like high grade fever headaches okay and uh, now moving to diarrhea so uh, what would be the cause of it diarrhea again is same like your contaminated food even with flies and all said now flies uh, you would see is like dogs and all they defecating in open sometime a fly sits there the fly sits on the same uh, food what you are eating so that all can cause like stomach infections and diarrhea even jaundice jaundice and typhoid are a bit of same like okay. fecal oral route presentations okay and uh, like uh, is are they the uh, does the typhoid and uh, jaundice uh, share the same uh, symptoms no, or jaund- is jaundice directly affects your liver yeah it directly affects your liver you can have a loss of appetite there can be a low grade fever in jaundice it won't be a high grade mm-hmm. uh typhoid is a bit different like typhoid can even damage your system or not it can even cause your bone marrow also depression it can dis- completely it's a life threatening if typhoid is not well controlled okay jaundice usually is not life threatening mm-hmm. but it will have a lot of morbidity like you have to take a lot of sick days because your appetite will go you have chances of losing weight mm-hmm. and jaundice has classical symptoms of yellowish uh, urine mm-hmm. you are a white part of the eye what we call sclera it becomes eyes become yellow your mm-hmm. mucous membranes become a bit yellowish so these are normal mm-hmm. signs what are the post effects or once a person recovers from typhoid what happens uh, you know it depends upon the intensity of typhoids like some typhoids mm-hmm. patient recover but he becomes a carrier so he is not symptomatic but he is going on transmitting okay go okay. typhoid infection okay and what happens internally to the body like how much does it get damaged internally see the complication of typhoids are uh, if you go to the complication it can have some intestinal perforations also mm-hmm. you have a lot of uh, bod- uh, you lose a lot of body weight mm-hmm. you may have uh, complications like organ failures also can occur okay okay and uh, the worst to worst scenarios okay but normally nowadays what with antibiotics and all lots of cases of typhoid comes under control but at the same time you see a lot of antibiotic resistance mm-hmm. so people don't take the complete course and also we have we are seeing a lots of cases of typhoid resistance also happening okay uh, so doctor if you could uh, help us understand about uh, the uh, diseases caused to mosquito bites usually, which are common usually one two are very famous i think your malaria is a common and this is because of mosquito bite age old mm-hmm. dengue is there dengue fever mm-hmm. you can call it dengue fever then we have chikungunya okay chikungunya last year i think in goa there was a very bad outbreak just for the basic understanding and it's it is said that uh, mosquitoes which uh, carry the infection or uh, the virus uh, to be more precise they bite only during the day is it true no even during nights malaria was usually during the nights and dengue we have seen they are daytime they okay. dengue means the bacteria breeds even in uh, the dengue infection breeds even in a uh, clean water yeah. and all so it was considered dirty water dirty pool stagnant water mm-hmm. so it's not like that so uh, day and night doesn't really matter for the mosquitoes yeah usually daytime is less 
if it's well ventilated and everything, mosquitoes normally are not there due to fleas. Okay. Uh, so, doctor, now if you could, uh, uh, you could explain or elaborate uh, for us, uh, what are the symptoms uh, of uh, dengue? And like, I mean, we'll we'll take all uh, or just dengue and chikungunya for now because malaria, I guess, not too many cases are heard of. No, malaria cases are very much there still. Very much there still. And malaria is the majority. Okay. Dengue and chikungunya. Chikungunya, you will not see much. It's only once in a. After many years, we see some outbreak. Chicken gunia is a very distinct okay. like. Uh, so malaria uh, is very common. So do these, uh, all these uh, three uh, conditions have the similar symptom? No, see, chicken gunia is to extent we can call it a milder, though it's long standing. Some people do suffer from long standing joint pains, body ache, and all. A lot of different, every person is a bit different. And malaria. Is having two types of malaria usually which are commonly seen is a falciferum and a vivax. Mm -hmm. Usually maximum cases of vivax and some cases of falciferum. Mm -hmm. Falciferum is a life threatening thing. Mm -hmm. Within 24 hours also you can see a patient can become very worse. Okay. Can even die. And the second kind And dengue, uh, second vivax usually patient gets a uh, Fever on first day again, the fever is spikes on the third day in between patient is completely fine. Mm -hmm. There are typical symptoms of malaria if you see you get high grade fever and there are shivering mm -hmm. and then after sometimes suddenly there will be body sweating when shivering is there he will ask for two or three blankets mm -hmm. and then after some time his body will sweat he will remove all the blankets and it will be body will be very hurt. So these are classical symptoms of malaria. malaria. And uh, what about dengue? Diego normally starts with again fever, there is a lot of weakness, you can have joint pains, there can be body rash, mm -hmm. loss of appetite. Usually signs of extreme weakness is usually seen. Okay. So in any what I would prefer like today we are having lots of labs around and everything. Mm -hmm. So if any signs of high fever, weakness, body pain. Wherever you feel you want intervention, best thing to go to a doctor and get yourself examined and do your blood test. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, chikungunya will uh, come with uh, fever and joint pain? Again, fever can be there, a bit rash can be there in chikungunya. You have joint pain, classical joint pain symptoms. Yes, and I, it, it can. I, I know it because I have gone through that phase. And that remains for a bad. long time. Yeah, yeah. rash is there and it remains for a long time. Yes. Even yes. up to three months we have uh, seen patients and yes. six months. I, I, when I was going through chikungunya, it was something that stayed for a very long time with me. Uh, so, uh, doctor, like um, once we go through the treatment of uh, all these three conditions, like uh, what are the uh, after effects? What does the body go through? And I'm really asking you this question is because uh, I've seen after I recovered from chikungunya, uh, life was never the same physically for me uh, after I recovered from the condition. So uh, not many people uh, actually know about it uh, and uh, I want you to uh, speak on this particular thing. What happens after we recover? Yeah, I got my uh, chikungunya. This is the first time 2022-23 mm. period like. Last year, I mean to say, we saw lots of cases in Goa of chikungunya and severe joint pain, rash, loss of appetite. Patients were mentally also a lot disturbed. Some patients recovered within a week, some patients took around 1, 15 days to, to a month. Mm -hmm. Some patients did have a problem like, which over a period I think a person recovers in chikungunya. Mm -hmm. So it is a bit of psychological impact also makes a person worse, I feel. Okay. And your diet, lifestyle, everything plays a very, very important role. Yeah. Body healing is you too, would be knowing better. Yes, because um, I mean, I have always been practicing yoga and I think that's been something that, which has, that has kept me going. Uh, so doctor, among the three uh, diseases caused through by mosquito bite, uh, which are the life-threatening ones among my chicken, gunia, dengue and malaria, which is the life-threatening one? Well, life-threatening, I would feel that it should be falciferum malaria. It's okay. a very fulminant type of falciferum malaria, can be a life-threatening. Mm -hmm. You can lose a patient within a day also. Okay. Again, dengue also is a very dangerous thing. Okay. But usually, dengue is um, 
more of sort like there is no specific medicines for dengue how there is a specific med medications for malaria where with the medicines malaria can be controlled completely also okay. so if the right time and the right diagnosis is done on the right time and patient is treated well hmm. it should come under control but dengue uh, there is no specific medications okay so here we have to give symptomatic treatment okay okay Uh, so now, doctor, I would like you to uh, advise us on precautions that need to be taken during the season. It may be uh, with the environment, like our surroundings, or with food. Uh, what are the precautions which we need to take, and and specifically both even for the infections and uh, the, the disease. For, uh, the first thing I will say is maintain you know, your surroundings very clean. Mm-hmm. Mm, uh, like uh, don't allow water to get uh, choked somewhere or stagnant waters and all just keep your surrounding clean mm-hmm. wash your hands before eating eat a very well balanced diet try to avoid greasy food fried stuffs and all because that has a bad effect on the digestive systems also yeah. so try to avoid too much of spicy greasy oily stuffs and all okay uh wash your hands before eating mm. before touching your nose or after touching your nose wash your hands and then touch your nose and mouth because the maximum of the infections are passed that way also mm. and wear completely covered clothes during nights if you are outside mm-hmm. try to avoid crowded places because covid and all you would have noticed like yes. so maximum viruses are transmitted during uh, congested places like covid or viral flus and all are like that mosquitoes you just use a mosquito repellent if you are going out in the nights and all mm-hmm. cover yourself well and uh, when it comes to foods uh, doctor um, like i would want to uh, know is it uh, healthy to consume uh, fish during the monsoons see, fish I, chicken see i am more in favor if you see whatever is fresh try to take during monsoons yeah. usually fishing boats are closed offshore offshores so everything is a bit of frozen yes and uh, even you see ayurveda shravan month and all there is a meaning for this when this all yes. seasons for me is more than religious there are having I mean, scientific reasons for that correct so it's better to avoid eating all meats and all because everything gets a bit contaminated and yeah. chances of diseases are more common in animals also during that period right so it's better to eat, consume fresh vegetables fresh fruits and well cooked food and yeah. one most important is to drink boiled water mm. and But not boiling hot <laughs> it's like no i'm not boil and cool water yes yes So uh with that uh, doctor it's a wrap for today's show thank, thank you, you thank so you much much. much for uh, making your time thank and you, you know you, giving us such a knowledgeable session thank you very much yeah thank you thank, thank you thank you thank you hope you enjoyed watching this video if you found the video informative don't forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel also hit the bell icon to keep up with regular updates